Uh, hi everyone. Hi Brian. Uh, hi Olga. Good, uh, yeah. good, good, good morning. Good morning. Brian. Hello. Yes. Hello everyone. Hello everyone. Yes. Um, so we're waiting for some people, but I think we can start for now. Um, uh, so actually, anyway, we will do some some recording here. So and we will send all recordings and all presentation to your emails after our webinar. So Brian, uh, good morning in Boston in uh, Europe. I think it's a really good day at this moment. I hope everybody feels good. So Brian, I think you can start. Uh, I just uh, will ask you, I mean, participant, just uh, mute your microphones. So uh, it, it would be actually better sound. So Brian. Certainly. Can, I, can everyone hear me OK? Can you hear me OK, Olga? Yes, I can hear you. Perfect. Just want to do a, a little sound check to make sure everyone can hear me well. Really happy to have this opportunity to speak to everyone. Uh, we're going to keep the presentation light and enjoyable. We're going to talk a little bit about lobsters in Boston and, and why we've chose those to be our mascot and why they're really popular. We're going to talk a little bit about Boston and we're going to talk about our, our new center at Curry College on campus Boston and why it's a really great destination for, for students. So I am going to move to my presentation. Can everyone see that OK? Yeah, yeah. OK, some of you ha are familiar with Lola. She, she is our mascot. Um, we kind of bring her around to all the shows we go to when we visit with Asians. Uh, they're very popular. They're really cute. And they symbolize a, a big industry here in Boston. And through the uh, in the surrounding area where we have American lobsters, and they're only found in a certain area of the of the planet, and they're they're very popular and they have a very interesting history. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So, where would you find American lobsters? Right off the coast of Boston, and actually a little bit north, about a, about two hours north is where most of them are in the state of Maine, which which borders Massachusetts where Boston is. So you can see where it's really red, that's where most of the lobsters uh, breed and are, and are caught. And from there they go, they're shipped all over the world. This is a little bit of a history of how lobsters in Boston, it might be a little bit surprising for some people. When Europeans first came to the, to the United States or the New World at that time, Around around the uh, 16th century, there were so many lobsters along the coast that sometimes after a storm, they would be two feet deep. They were everywhere, and and they were considered a nuisance. Um, even Native Americans would only use them, you know, if in case if there was a, a famine or uh, if it was if it was the middle of winter and they needed to get food, or usually they they usually just use them as like fertilizer to grow other crops or bait to catch other fish. So it sounds it sounds amazing now because lobsters are so expensive, especially outside of the New England area. Um, we sh we ship you know tons and tons of them to uh, to Asia every year and 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 throughout the world, and they're very expensive. But that wasn't always the case. It used to be very, it used to be a nuisance. There were so many of them. Um, so at some point, someone figured out how are we going to make some money off of these lobsters, you know? And so the first idea they had to, to get these lobsters around the world was to put them in cans. And they were so plentiful and 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 the demand was so was so low that. Even though they were canning them, they were they cost less than a, a can of beans, like five times less. So they certainly weren't making a lot of money off them. But it was at least there were so many lobsters around. They said, "Let's make some money." So they put them in cans, and you know, at the time they were cooking the lobsters after they they had died. So it really wasn't the same experience. It didn't taste very good, and sometimes the lobsters in the cans were even black when they arrived, and people were just used. They would eat them anyway. It was considered the food of, of poor people. 
after World War II, uh, they discovered that lobsters, especially American lobsters, are really good if you cook them live. So when they when they take a lobster now out of the sea, they keep them alive until they bring them actually to the store. And you, when you bring it home, it's actually alive, and you throw it right into the hot water when it's alive. And when you cook it like that, that's when it's the most delicious. And it was after World War II when there was a lot of infrastructure to ship these things around that they became really popular. And even like movie stars were having them and, and rich people and it was considered a really exotic food. And that's that's kind of when lobsters went from being the food of poor people to being the food of, of very wealthy people. On the screen here, you see a couple of traps. The commercial fishers, the fishermen, the, the big, big uh, industry of lobsters are usually caught in these big yellow traps. But locally, if you go to a restaurant here in the Boston area, they're probably caught in these little kind of round traps here. They both work the same way. They're really easy for the lobsters to, to, go, to walk into, but they cannot get out of there. And these, tra these traps usually sit on the, on, the, on the ocean floor. When you come to Boston or in or Maine or the area around it, you'll see a couple of different types of boats. The commercial fleets are very big. They carry the big yellow traps. They catch tons of lobsters when they go out. But the more, uh, the more common or the more uh, romantic version of it are these small, independent lobster fishermen. And they use these wooden traps. And you can see them along Boston and Cape Cod. And, you know, they'll catch a, a few hundred lobsters in during a week. They're not a big commercial farm, but, but they still earn a living because there's always a big demand for lobsters, especially fresh lobsters in local restaurants. Can everyone, can everyone understand me okay? Or am I talking too fast or too slow? Yeah, okay. that's fine. Absolutely fine. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, yeah. I can oh, hear perfect. you very good. So this is just to be a little idea of where most of the lobsters are, are come from. The, the big bar there is the state of Maine. They're just about two hours north of Boston. And then the rest, everything down to, everything in blue was all caught around the Boston area. So 90% so of the lobsters that are caught, the American lobsters shipped around the world are caught in the Boston area. This is kind of the industry that goes along with it. It's a really messy job to, once lobsters are caught and brought into the factory, they have to be cleaned. Uh, the, the most delicious part of lobsters are in the claw and in the tail. So they have to separate that. And the, the middle of the body is usually used as a scrap or they, they use it for other purposes, for bait, for fertilizer. But still, that's a, it's, it's kind of a messy job. And there really isn't a very good machine to do it. A lot of it has to be done by hand. And then they're shipped out by truck to you know local areas or to airports or wherever they're destined from there. So why are Boston lobsters the best? It really has to do with the cool water off the coast of New England, off the coast of Boston and Maine. It just really and the big claws that these lobsters have. There are a couple couple of uh, species of lobsters. The spiny lobsters with the small small claws are usually down in warmer water. But these big, meaty lobsters are found only off the coast of Boston along the cold waters. And that's really what makes them sweet and delicious. And the big discovery was, was cooking them when they were alive. So that's really made a difference. It really made a difference in the taste. Really fresh and, and really delicious. So that's a little history of lobsters in Boston. Now I'm going to talk a little bit about the city and why it's such a great destination. Boston is a city of first. In the United States, it was, it was a, uh, the site of the first public school, uh, Boston Latin School, which I actually went to back in the uh, 1980s. And it's also the first public park, the Boston Common, which is still very viable, and very popular today. Uh, the first subway, in the United States was in Boston. Um, even the first telephone was in Boston. And there's an interesting story that goes with that. The inventor of the telephone was a gentleman named Alexander Graham Bell. And he was actually a good friend of Silas Curry, the founder of Curry College. And 
he was actually the first chancellor of Curry College when it was located in the city from 1907 to 1922. So that's a great kind of interesting fact that the inventor of the telephone was actually good friends and a chancellor of Curry College. And they, and they even to this day, they keep up a big communications program. They have their own TV station, their own radio station that broadcasts all over the city. Uh, so they kept that legacy alive. And it's a very popular major on the campus. Innovation. Boston is well known for innovation. Of course, everyone knows MIT and Harvard and Tufts. But there's thousands of small digital and internet companies all over the Cambridge and Boston area. Um, the fact that we have great public transportation, we have a network of bike paths, lots of park space. These are the things that kind of attract the best, the, the best minds and keep people who go to these schools, they keep them in the Boston area because they fall in love with the city and they don't want to move once they've been here. And it, it's good and bad. It's good because we have great technology industry here in Boston, uh, but the price is, to live in Boston is very expensive. Uh, so, like, if you want to buy property here or, or go out to eat, it's a big difference than, than other places throughout the country. Boston is a super healthy city. I talked a little bit about the parks. Um, it's one of the fittest cities, like, uh, the people in the best shape uh, physically and health-wise. and health -wise. It has some of the best hospitals in the world as well. Um, it has more public parks and playgrounds and farmer markets than most of the cities in the United States. So a really healthy place to live. Museums and culture. This, this uh, photo here is from the, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, which I love. It's a short ride, it's a short trip from a lot of colleges and a short trip from Curry College as well. Really beautiful and, and you know, anyone wants to study art, this is definitely a must see. They have some of the best art in the world. They recently had a, um, an exhibit of ancient Egypt that was spectacular. They also had, Boston also has great uh, symphony, uh, has the Berkeley School of Music. A lot of great music talent goes there. We've actually transferred students. We recently had a student who transferred into Berkeley that was his there. And Boston's all about learning. It's considered the eighth best city in the world to, to study and certainly the best city in the United States. Um, because of the unusual high number of schools, Boston's nickname as the Athens of America, where in the ancient world, Athens were where the most educated, the most learning, the most inquisitive people in the world would go to study, Boston has kind of taken that mantle, taken that that title as, you know, if you want to study and you want to meet real it has institutes of, of a higher learning. And in the greater Boston area is over 50 universities. And of course, the big ones, MIT, Harvard, Tufts, uh, Northeastern, it's just, you can go block to block and, and visit some of the best schools in the world. Um, I recently had a student from Russia and his family come uh, to visit Boston and we visited, they visited Boston University. University and they had a great visit. They really loved the feel of the city. I'm gonna talk a little bit about our partner, Curry College and why we think it's a really great destination for your students. Um, to sum it up, the thing that really makes a difference with, uh, with on-campus Boston is, is our support. We have a great staff. We give all kinds of support for our students. From the moment they get their acceptance letter, our student support advisor, Azumi, is in touch with the students, letting them know what to expect when they arrive, what to bring, where she'll meet them if they need to get picked up, what the dormitories look like, what they should bring to the dormitories, you know, answering all the questions of a first year, first time traveler to the United States. And then upon arrival, we have a great orientation. Our students meet our English for academic purposes teacher. 
they, who helps them with all of the, the written assignments and the research assignments, critical thinking. Those are also four classes that are in, in addition to the credit bearing classes that the students will take at Curry College. We have a transfer advisor as well, Emily, who from the very beginning is talking to the students about where they want to go after they finish their year with us. If they want to stay at Curry College or if they have aspirations to go to to rank schools or top 50 schools, she'll definitely guide them, give them the correct expectations and tell them what they need to do in order to be to be ready to transfer after two semesters in our program. So support, we have a great legacy of support and we have a great history of, of transfers, uh, successful transfers from our program. So what is the program? It's a uh, first year experience. We give a lot of cultural and welfare support. And when we talk about that, we just say, you know, we let students know uh, how to get comfortable, how to get uh, meet friends, how to, you know, if you're feeling lonely, you know, what are the resources on or, or you're missing home or you have a girlfriend or boyfriend problem, you know, what are the resources available for that student and how can we support them and help them through the program? We have great academic support. Uh, in addition to all of the assistance and all of the resources at Curry College, our own advisors meet with our students twice uh, every two weeks, mandatory, and then there's walk-in hours as well. And our whole goal is to just make sure that students, you know, are doing well in their classes and checking in on them, checking in on them, to the point that our students sometimes say, why do you care so much about me? Why do you care about my attendance? Why do you care what my grades are? And we always make the point that, you know, I know it's important to parents, I know it's important to agents, but it's also important to us because their success is our success. And we want to be successful and we want, we want them to be successful. Um, dream school support. Emily, our transfer advisor, will work with students. You know, everybody has a dream school they want to go to. And she'll map out a plan and say, if you want to go to the school, this is what you need to do. Curry College, the, our partner, beautiful campus. It's about seven miles from the center of Boston. Um, it is safe. It's a gated community. It's in the town of Milton, which is voted one of the best places in the United States to live. Really, one of the best places I've ever worked. Beautiful when you drive into the campus, very safe. Uh, looks just like the colleges from the movies. You know, all the brick buildings, students walking from class to class. You hear the bells in the background. It's, it's really nice. It's a great experience and a great place for a first year experience for students. Class, small classroom size. The average is about 13 students to each faculty. Uh, a lot of our classes are even smaller than that. They're seven to one or eight to one. And there are over 40 student run clubs. In fact, this year was the first time uh, Curry College had an international students club and it was started by our own students at On Campus Boston. So very proud of them for that. Great nationality mix in our program that we have students from all over the world. We have students from, from, from Asia. We have students from Korea, Vietnam, China. We have Pakistan, India. We have from Africa. We have, um, we have students from uh, we have students from South America as well, from Venezuela, from Bolivia. And, you know, historically we've had students from Russia, from Ukraine, from Kazakhstan, and we look forward to welcoming those students back to our, to our program uh, this fall. This gives you an idea of what a student's timetable looks like. You can see it's pretty full. It's a very busy day for our students. Um, I've circled uh, the classes in, in green, uh, the classes that are support classes. So those classes that are circled are the classes that my staff delivers to the students. Uh, there's no, they're non-credit bearing classes, but they're there to help students succeed in their credit bearing classes. So I always tell students and, and, and agents that it's a really good value because if you are a direct entry student, you go to five classes uh, or 15 credits, you earn 15 credits per semester. But if you come through the pathway at On Campus Boston, you'll get the same thing, plus you get additional classes at no extra cost. Our staff to really 
support students, advise them, you know, help them with their with, what they're struggling with, uh, whether it be English or research or vocabulary, and really ensure that the students get the most out of the credit bearing classes. Really, our goal is to have these students have the very best possible first year and be in a position to transfer to the best possible school for year two. Who transfers? Lots of students in the U.S. transfer. At least one third of all the students in the U.S. start at one university and, and finish at another university. Some of the most famous transfers are um, of President Obama. He started Occidental and he went to Columbia. And of course, uh, President Kennedy started Princeton and went to Harvard. So it's very common. Everyone, it's, you know, no one's surprised when a student transfers from one school to another. Why are transfer students important? Well, transfer students are important in the U.S. because during the first year, a lot of great universities lose students. You know, students who weren't ready to come, ready to study in the U.S. They get distracted, they get lonely, they don't have the support of a pathway like ours, and it, it ends up with a lot of empty seats at these universities for year two. So these universities will come to us and they'll say. You know, who are your best students? These are the students they want to recruit because one, the students have shown they've, they've been successful. And two, they have experience. You know, they, they understand the culture of the US and they're much more likely to be successful. How does it work? Students will earn 15 credits in the first semester, 15 credits in the second semester, and they'll transfer with 30 credits, which is the equivalent of a first year, just about any college in the US. When students transfer, we try to divide up their applications in three categories. We want students to apply to REACH schools. These are their dream schools, the schools like Boston University and NYU, really selective schools, very difficult to get into, um, but we've had success getting students into these schools. We've had students go to NYU and Boston University and Brandeis and USC. Students who came in strong academically, but they really, you know, either they applied to these schools, direct entry and didn't get in it and, and decided that the pathway would be um, a good way to get, you know, a second chance to get into these schools, or they missed the deadline and decided to come to our program, which has a little bit later deadline, you know, do really well show they got great grades and then transfer into these top schools. The majority of our students go to what's called target schools. These are schools, you know, between 150 and 50. Schools like really well-known schools like Stony Brook and Drexel and Florida Institute of Technology. That's the majority of our students go to those type of schools. And then we always have safety schools. The number one safety school, of course, is Curry College, which is a great safety school because it has a lot of great majors. <laughs> Uh, as a communications major, has a business major, um, it has a biology major, uh, biochemistry major, it has a, a design, a graphic arts design major. So it has a lot of options for students who really like the atmosphere. They really like their professors. They're really comfortable there. And then they also have a major that they can continue to. Our goal is to have our students apply to six schools, a minimum of six schools. So the good news is that most of the uh, most of the uh, acceptances start to come in right about this time. So between April 1st and the middle of May, most of our students start to receive their acceptances. And just a little side note, we've started to get the first acceptances from our students who came in. They started last September. Uh, we had one student from uh, a student from Venezuela who uh, was accepted to Suffolk University. And they received uh, a renewable scholarship of eighteen thousand dollars for each year that she's there. Really great, great student. And we had another student from China who just received his uh, acceptance to Loyola University of Loyola, and also Pace and Hofstra. So those are some of the acceptances we have just received, and we expect to get a lot more over this next month. Couple of students from Russia that I've had great success with. Uh, this student here, great student, focused, 
He his GPA was <laughs> 4.0. Now 4.0 is the highest GPA you can get. It sounds really impressive, but at Curry College, it's not super difficult to get a 4.0. If you go to the classes and do the work, and you know have some skills, you know a GPA between 3.5 and 4.0 is not that difficult because of you know where Curry College is ranked. Um, so. 4.0 is usually students who are serious and they do the work and they, they usually come in as a pretty strong student as well. You can see his IELTS, his English proficiency wasn't that great. It was a 5.5, which is mid-range. This student never took another IELTS or TOEFL exam. So how did he get into Miami? He got in because he got an A in both English classes that we offer in the program. And the University of Miami said that's proof enough of his English proficiency. So he never had to take a TOEFL and he went right into Miami. That was his dream school from the very beginning. Um, so another student here, Anna, she's studying math at the Question School of Business at Boston University. Great student. She came in, she was, her, her high school grades weren't that strong. She was a B student uh, and she was shy, but she really bonded with her advisors at, at, at On Campus Boston did the work, and she went to Boston University. What type of students do we look for? You know, if you have a student who's ambitious or hardworking, those are students we, we can really work with and we can really, we can really assist them to get to the schools they want to get to. And someone who comes in with a goal, says, this is where I want to go, that makes our job a lot easier. We, we know what they're looking for, we can tell them what they need to do, and we can help them, you know, achieve their goal. And this is Lola wrapping up with Lola. We started with her. This is our mascot. And the name Lola came from this an acronym, which means to learn, overcome, laugh, and achieve. And those are the things we want for our students. We want them to enjoy their time with us. And they do. Most of them do. But we also want them to achieve their goals. So that's kind of, and that, that's, that's the presentation right there. I wanted to talk about, you know, of course, the fun part was about the lobsters. And say, you know, why did we choose that mascot? Little history behind that. I wanted to talk about Boston and why it's such a great place. You know, I was born in Boston. I grew up here. A lot of people say, "Oh, you sound like you have a European accent." It's not the case. I, I'm. I wouldn't want to live anywhere else. Um, and of course, we want our students to achieve. We want the, our students to, you know, to go ahead and and come to our program. We want them to be supported. We want them to feel comfortable and we want them to succeed. So I hope you enjoyed that presentation and I'm open for any questions you might have about the program. Any questions out there? Hello, Brian, my name is Dimitri. So, so can I ask you a question, yeah? Of course, Dimitri. Yeah, so like I, I've, I've been dealing with UK educational institutions mostly, and then like for, for our students, they usually have to go for foundation course or international year one. It takes them a year, and then they progress to university. How does it work in US? Like, I mean, in Boston on campus. So like they go to international year one for a year or, or two. So the international year one is a little different in the US. Yeah. Um, from the very beginning, students start to earn college credits. Yeah. So typically in the U.S., a student would need to earn 120 credits on a degree. Here, in addition to the support classes and the support from my team, students are taking credit-bearing classes. So they'll earn 30 of those credits or one-fourth of what they need to graduate. Yeah. So that's one of the great things about coming to the U.S. Right away, students are earning. They're in classrooms. Uh, they're earning credits. Some mm -hmm. of our students are mixed in with, with Curry College students, but the majority of them uh, move as a sheltered class. Uh, like, they all take the same mm -hmm. English class. They all take the math class. Yeah, I see. So, like, they get, like, 30 credits per year and then move to university. So it takes them four, year, four years to get the, the degree. Correct. It, it's very, that's the, the most common track is four years for a student. Sometimes a student 
you know, if they're very ambitious or they bring some credits from uh, like a uh, a level program, they can do it in three years th or three and a half years. But mm -hmm. generally, four years is the most common track. I see. Thanks. Thanks. My pleasure. Any other questions? Any questions about majors or how we transfer students? Um, tracks. We have two exciting new partners right now. We have a partner in the University of Cincinnati that has over 300 majors. So if you look at the website for On Campus Boston, you might just see a couple of tracks. We talk about our business track. We talk about our general education track, our science track. But the reality is that if a student does one year in our program, they can move on to our partner, you know, guaranteed progression to University of Cincinnati. Um, where there's over 300 majors, things like interior design and, and, and engineering. So there's lots of tracks for these students. Our goal in the first year is to give students the type of, of classes that are easily transferred to as many programs as possible. So if a student wants to study engineering or science, we'll, we'll, we'll advise them to take a calculus class. If they want to study business, we'll advise them to take a statistics class. And then, of course, they're required to take the, the first year English classes. And then on top of that, depending on what they want to study, we'll try to you know, select the elective classes that are in their interest. So if they wanted to study, um, if they wanted to study science we, or, or biology, we'd have them take a biology class or a science class. If they want to study design, we'd have them take a design class as an elective. So the, the important thing is that the classes they take are easily transferred to other programs. We also have a, gr a great partner in, in uh, Illinois Institute of Technology. We have guaranteed progressions there for students who meet the criteria. A fantastic uh, engineering program, um, one of the best in the in the country, and highly sought after. And, and students who finish that that program move into some of the best jobs in the country. What else can I tell you about the program? Curry College is a nice, really nice location. It's about to uh, come. Uh, there's three, so it's easy for students, you know, to, to uh, get their meals wherever they, you know, uh, close to where they are. Our offices and our classroom space is only about a five minute walk from the dormitory. So easy for students to walk there, especially now it's spring. Uh, soon, we hope soon we'll have students back on campus and, you know, in the fall, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's one of the, one of the, the nicest visually and uh, one of the safest places to study in the country. Um, Brian, do you have plans for the next September regarding the accommodation? I mean, like, it seems like that the students will be unable to come to you in the first uh, quarter of the year academic year. Well, so yes. what, what, what are your thoughts about that? Yeah, so my, the communication I've got from Curry College is that they're moving ahead with the assumption that students will be back on campus in August. So they just announced the cancellation of the summer, uh, but they really mm -hmm. think that they, you know, their confidence is really high that the students will be welcomed back to campus in August. Now, oh. it's difficult. there's always uncertainty with that. Um, yeah. because you don't know how long this crisis is going to last. And, you know, it, it's, I, I'm really proud of the students we have in our program right now who, you know, made the adjustment very quickly to learn online and, you know, they had to leave the campus fairly quickly. Um, but mm -hmm. going forward, you know, there's a high confidence level at Curry College, you know, due to the fact that, you know, we're, we're kind of outside the city. It's a really sheltered environment. Uh, we have the, the health center right on the campus. They feel confident that they're going to be able to take students, you know, starting in August. Oh, great. Great. Thank you. My pleasure. Well, I, I really look forward to it, too. We think that this this August and September is going to be a fantastic intake. We're expecting, you know, a really diverse number of uh, students to come from all over the world. And and uh, mm -hmm. Curry College is very excited for any international students. Unlike most of the schools in the Boston area, the, the you know, the well-known schools who have, you know, 15 or 20 percent international students, Curry College only has 1%, so they have a lot of catching up to do. And, oh, the students, and the students that we brought in over the last year are so welcomed. 
everyone goes out of the way to say welcome to the campus how can we support you we're really happy you're here um it's just a great place if you're an international student coming to curry college is a great first year because you're going to feel welcomed they really they really appreciate international students on the campus mm -hmm. Any other questions out there? Olga, any other questions from you? Uh, from me, no question, Brian. <laughs> That's right. Thank you, you, you very you've much. You sat yeah. in my presentation. You know it pretty well. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I've heard it a lot of time, you know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Well, I want to say that my trip to, to Russia was fantastic. I really enjoyed Moscow, really enjoyed St. Petersburg. You know, it just seems like a dream now, but it was really great to, you know, get out and visit agents. And I hope that, you know, when this crisis is over, maybe next year I can come back and visit, you know, some of the agents that are on the call here. I'd be love to, to meet with you and, you know, tell you more about the program. In the meantime, any questions, Olga can answer them. And if I can be of any support, you know, if you have a particular student and Olga knows I've done this, you know, I've walked students around uh, virtually with my iPhone, show them the campus. I've met students and their families here and taken them to other schools that they were interested in. So Olga can, can, uh, can uh, assure you that, you know, if you have a student, we'll take good care of them. Um, and especially a family, we'll do whatever we can to make their experience, their, their visit to Boston. And if they decide to stay with us, to, to be a really pleasant experience. Yes, and I think uh, we should introduce Samir as well. Uh, I think I can see him here because he will be the main contact for most of the uh, participants here. Samir, can you join us? Hi, Samir. Hi, how are you doing? Hi, yeah, yeah. I think Samir, you should say some words about your role here because yes, I'm working with my Russian agents, Yuri actually in contact with uh, agents from Ukraine, but um, you will be the main contact for all agents, you know, uh, around the world. Can you just say some words, I think? Yeah, so I um, just recently joined um, on campus US. So I'm now the regional manager for the US. Um, anything related towards US from the west side will be um, handled by me. So if you have any questions in terms of inquiries or you want to do more presentations, I think Olga will obviously be leading on um, a lot of things within Russia. Um, however, me and Yuri will be working more closely together in Ukraine. Um, and then we obviously have Brian for On Campus Boston helping out with us for Boston things. And then Susan will be supporting us with IIT. But yeah, my main role is to make sure that we make um, our centers in the US is success. Um, so if you have any questions about anything US related, then please do obviously contact me and I can obviously help you out. And Samir, I just want to follow up uh, with, sure. a, with on your words. You know, with On Campus Boston, we have a lot of flexibility that other programs don't have. You know, we'll work with agents, you know, we'll work with students who might be you know, on the border of being accepted and do everything we can to bring them here and support them. We have a great history of supporting students you know, who come with lower GPAs or may have struggled in their senior year. We've had students who've, who may have struggled uh, at university, either in the UK or here in the US, and want a second chance. And that's really what we're known for. We're known for giving students a second chance and really helping them find themselves and to be successful. Uh, and that's, and we have the flexibility on on English and on GPAs to accept a lot of students that may not be accepted to even other pathway programs. So if you have that type of student you think might need extra help or you know may have had a difficult year here or there, if they have a good personal statement, we'll review it and we'll do everything we can to accept that student. Thank you, Brian. I think we have one more question from Theo. Uh, sure. So what uh, what do you expect the effect of coronavirus for September intake? So the, 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 the thought right now at Curry College is business as usual. Um, they're expecting everyone to be on the campus and studying as normal by August. Their feeling right now is that the, you know, the bell curve of the, of the infections of the virus 
should be winding down in late June, you know, or at the very or very early July. They think by August it'll be full speed ahead. There's a lot of there's a lot of pressure here uh, from the president, from businesses to get things up and running again. You know, everybody wants to get back to work, and hopefully by that by June, early July, the number of cases will come down to near zero. So that's the expectation. You know, everyone here has their fingers crossed. Everybody wants to get back to work. Everybody wants to, to, to welcome these students back to campus. Certainly Curry does. Certainly we do. You know, we, we have a good partnership with them and we want to work together and they're, they're excited to move forward and so are we. So that's the, that is the, the mentality. That's the plan right now that, you know, the, the bell curve, the number of infections should fall off to a, you know, close to zero sometime around the beginning of July, and then by August, it'll be business as usual will be open for business. There is a contingency plan in case it drags out longer. You know, they 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 have been they've had experience with online learning. If it comes to that, then they are prepared to do that. But of course, that's not the best scenario. Um, one scenario they're talking about: if it lasted a little bit longer, maybe students could start the semester. The first semester online, and then sometime during that semester, they could come to the campus. But uh, not confident that they're going to be business as usual for August intake. Yeah, I'll just say, um, just follow up on that as well. For IIT, is exactly the same as well. It's going to be for the fall intake. It is um, business as usual for them as well. So. Right now, we are working towards face-to-face um, -face, um, teaching for the fall intake. Um, but again, the same with Boston. There is a contingency plan if that doesn't happen for us to go online. But we are working towards a, um, a business as usual process for now. Any other questions? I think we have no question at okay. this moment. Uh, yeah. So Brian, thank you very much for your time, for your great presentation as usual. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, it's, really, and it's a pleasure to work with you. You're very how hard you work. I walk so much in my life as I have my visit to Moscow. <laughs> but really, you're always I, welcome. yeah, you are really professional, and it's, it's a pleasure to work with you as well, and meet all your thank agents. Thank you very much, Brian. Um, thank you all for your participation in our webinar. So just a quick reminder about our webinar tomorrow at uh, 9.30 a.m. UK time. We will talk about London South Bank University. So we will be happy to see you there. Uh, so if you have any question about Boston, about US programs, please send me a message, send a message to Samir O'Brien, and I will use send a recording of this webinar with presentation shortly. Have a good time, have a good day, and take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for the presentation. Hey, I want to show everyone my, my favorite souvenir from, from my trip to Russia here. I hope everyone enjoyed it. <laughs> <laughs> My son loves this hat. He wears it everywhere. <laughs> Very nice to have everybody on the call. I look forward to working with all of you in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.